In this episode in the FXDM educational series, we're going to be taking a look at Fibonacci levels, which are really interesting. These are based on the Fibonacci number series, which as you can see here, each number in the series is just equal to the previous two numbers in the series. So here we start at 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and so forth, 34, 55, 89, 144. Now, as we go higher in the number series, then a relationship or a ratio between the numbers that are separated by one or separated by two units in the series or separated by three units in the series start to exhibit a very interesting relationship. So let's look at a few of these. Let's say, for example, that we take 55 and we divide that by the next number in the series, which is 89. That's going to give us a ratio of 61.8%. Now we take 55, and now this time we're going to divide 55 by a number, two numbers ahead in the series, which is 144. That's going to give us a, a lower ratio here of 38.2%. Now let's go one more. So we'll do 55 divided by, now I know what the next number in the series is because 89 plus 144 is 233. So 55 divided by 233 equals a ratio of 23.6%. Now, what's interesting about this is that the Fibonacci ratios wind up showing up not just in the financial markets, but actually within nature we see it in architecture. It's used as a, a guide to perfect proportions and so forth. So this is a very interesting ratio relationship that we can see in reverse as well. So it, let's imagine, for instance, that we take each one of these uh, division problems and I'm going to invert them. So in other words, I'm going to take 89 and I'm going to divide it by 55. So if I were to do that and, and 144 and divide it by 55, so if I were to do that, then I get a slightly different number. So let's put this in red. I'm going to get 161.8%. And here, if I take 144 and I divide it by 55, I'll get 261.8%. And of course, if I take 233 divided by 55, I'm going to get 423.6%. Now, these ratios, as I said, they do show up in nature. So for example, take a look at the Nautilus shell. As those spirals become smaller and smaller, they do so actually according to the Fibonacci ratio. So each of those spirals is a ratio of the larger one beyond it. Or sunflower seeds, for example. Each one of the rows of seeds within the blossom are growing or shrinking, depending on whether you're going in or out, in proportion to the Fibonacci ratios. The Fibonacci number series and its ratios can be a lot of fun. It's very interesting. As an example, we can go even deeper with these ratios. I can look at the proportion of 38.2 compared to 61.8. If I divide 38.2 by 61.8, I'll get 61.8 again. So we can look at these ratios and uh, experiment with them in a in fun way for math, but they're also really helpful for determining where we expect a retracement to end or a correction against the prevailing trend to end versus when we think that a correction has ended, where we think the prevailing trend is going to uh, reassert itself and how far it's likely to go. So as an example, if the market were in decline, so if a currency pair were falling and then it began to retrace a little bit against that decline, well, what we would want to do is to use these Fibonacci ratios to try to figure out, well, that retracement or that rally after this significant decline, how far is it likely to go? So let's call this A and we'll call this here B. Well, there is a very good chance that B will be a Fibonacci proportion of A. So in other words, if we were to split A up into these Fibonacci ratios, then what we could determine is we'd say, well, there's a fairly high likelihood that B is going to end at 61.8% of A, or potentially it may end at 38.2% of A as well. So we have a benchmark to be able to make some estimates as to how far we think the currency pair is going to retrace or correct against the given trend. And obviously a mirror image of this in a bull trend 
for bearish corrections would work just as effectively. In fact, let's look at a chart example of exactly this scenario. So as you can see here, the currency pair was in a rally and then began to retrace or correct against that prevailing trend. Now a trader would make an estimate as to where that correction is likely to end. And one of those estimates should be a Fibonacci level, in this case 61.8%, which is very common actually, and that's where we see the rally reassert itself. In this bearish example, we find the currency pair stopping more or less at resistance that was equal to the 38.2% Fibonacci level before the currency pair reasserted itself and began to fall again. Now how can we use the Fibonacci ratios to make an estimate as to how far we think that the trend, once it's been corrected or retraced, how far that trend is likely to extend, assuming that it breaks its former support or resistance level? Well, we can use these Fibonacci ratios to do that again. So in this case, let's continue our scenario here. Let's say that B, in fact, did stop at 38.2 and then continues to the downside. Well, this is where these levels here become very useful. So an investor can evaluate uh, setting take profit levels at 161.8, 261.8, or 423.6% of the amount of the retracement. So in this case, that's B. So if an investor were to do that, well, they could make very reasonable estimates as to how far is it likely to fall. So let's say, for example, an investor assumes that it could fall to 161.8%. Maybe we'll get a little consolidation at that level. It could continue to decline, of course, to the reciprocal of 161.8%, which is 261.8%, and even as far as 423.6%. So an investor can evaluate what their potential upside is based on reasonable targets that the currency pairs tend to hit these levels. They may consolidate. Now, they may stop there. That may be where the trend terminates, but it, they, it's not uncommon for them to consolidate a little bit and then to continue on through these target levels one after the other until we get some kind of significant trend reversal pattern. Here's a follow-up example on the bearish trend that retraced to 38.2%, and then an investor would have looked at this to evaluate how do they create a projection of the downside. Well, based on the size of the retracement, that gives them a ratio of 61.8%, where you can see a little consolidation there, 261.8%, and even to 423.6% much later before we finally see the currency pair forming some tentative support. There's a lot to learn about Fibonacci levels and Fibonacci analysis, but a great place to get started is by using my ratios to determine how far do I think that the currency pair is likely to correct against the trend, and then once that correction is done, how far do I think that the trend is likely to go as a proportion not only of the previous trend, but also of the correction itself. So Fibonacci analysis can give you a good guide for making those estimates that are more likely to be achieved and give you a better sense for your risk to reward in a given trade.